Um, what this means for the Varus is going to be an interesting one, because I think that on hit gets a lot more value when you've basically got an entire team full of frontline. Yeah, there's so many champions on the side of Condor Fluke that can help create space for him, help lock people down, so I think on hit would make more sense in this situation. Let's jump out of the rip for game number one of our Saturday Showdown. Fleet footwork being the most popular. And it is going to be the Lethality uh, Varus, so clearly you want to use that poke against the Relative short range of Nongshim. Obviously, Nongshim have a lot of ability to gap close, but uh, Zeri and Talia aren't the longest range champions themselves. And I think importantly, kind of going on your point before about the Maokai, um, even though it's not obviously going to be a farming Maokai paired with the center, winning lane, getting ahead, even as a support, makes such a big difference to how this champion can operate. Get an early axle Whoa. in a winning lane. That isn't winning lane. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and we see with some of the other choices, you know, namely the Comet, maybe a little bit of extra poke damage early. Yeah, it's not fun playing Indu here. No, Dudu is demonstrating that that is exactly right. And there is the knockup. Actually, Andil not able to stop it. Okay, the Ignite is down. He might just be dead. We'll at least have to flash, I think, but no, there's the flash forward, and he flashes anyway. Disaster! Zeri picks up the kill for first blood. Udia doesn't exactly have the control, but still be able to lock down that one. Weaver's wall coming on in as well as Dudu. Going to be blocked out from this one. Great Emperor's Divide, though, and that is going to be the kill. On to Call Me. Flash from Sylvie will lock down one of his own as Dundon. He's booping, but I don't know whether it's actually going to get him any kills. So instead, he runs really quickly and is just going to be able to press a whole bunch of buttons and be fine. The Udia way. On the Udia first, I think he was one of the, the more experimental Udia players, as Kuz is going to find a Glacial Prison. And speaking of Dundon, he's dead. Yep. He's real dead. And you can see with the build that Dundon's gone, so Oblivion Orb to cut down the healing of the Aatrox, boots of swiftness so he can stick on top of him more, but no armor. Some power in side lanes and things like that certainly going to be very valuable, especially with the pseudo-globals that they do have available. Speaking of which, in comes one towards this top side, and there is the flash out. Uh, Peter not quite there in time, though, as Jiwoo skates over the wall. They find the knockup, and it's Jiwoo that collects it. The shutdown gold going to the Zeri. And you're the one that always brings all the Chemtex. It's just a little bit sad, isn't it? I am kissed. Yeah. Oh, much. See what I said, 80%. Okay, Paranoia going to come on down here as right into the back line goes Sylvie. He's right on top of Bolt. Not a whole lot he can do about it. And he's going to have to flash the wall. Does get out of the way, but Jiwoo is dead as well. Colmy takes down Bulldog. And Sylvie has at least continued to zone out the Varus. So a one for one is going to be the trade. And it's so definitely viable getting gold on that. And now looking for another bot lane gang. Yep, uh, that's going to be Paranoia used. I have a feeling Dudu's dead. He will be knocked up, and there it is. They just take down the turret as well. Bull now has an opportunity to try and lock down this turret as well, but Seismic uh, Shove and all of the rocks and things like that is going to mean that that's going to be impossible. And Teleport was prepared. The flank angle for the Aatrox, that's a scary one, but they know exactly what's going on. Nature's Grasp will catch out one, and it's Dundon. So he can tank a bit, but not that much. The quickness diving into the back line is now Jiwoo trying to utilize the lack of vision on the side of the Guangdong Freaks, but Bulldogs found him. Empress divide after the flash, and they just execute the Zeri. Call me, not going to be able to get the seismic shove onto Kuz either. And that was a disaster for Nongshim. It's fine, though. All right. This outer turret on the top side of the map. The next thing that Nongshim are looking for, Nature's Grasp going to come down there. A seismic shove will be stopwatched. Really nicely done, but not going to save Bulldog. He does get a really nice Empress Divide um, of this Drake area. And, all right, yeah, Flank Weaver's again, Wall going board. to come down. Nature's Grasp coming in. Peter looking for that flank angle. Can they actually get anything done here, though, is the question. Peter dives over. That is going to be the steal on the Drake, but can they win the fight? Dindon is dealing with Dudu, and now they've taken out the tree. Sylvie is burning, but he's still alive. And Nongshim, they can just back away if they would like to. Still a few cooldowns left up and available here for the Kwandong Freaks. So not going to risk it. As an that's, example that's for fair. what a champion should normally do. That's valid. As, all right. Sylvie actually going to avoid the smite interrupting the spell shielders. There is the wall, but no, he gets pulled back. And it's not going to work out now. Dundon, he's running for the hills. There's the Nature's Grasp. Doesn't get a lot of value as now Peter's on that flank angle. 
And you can see the Zeri wants to find a way in. They want to save this Udia, but it's not going to work out. Sylvian Dundon just lying on the floor. And now these theoretical flankers possibly caught out themselves. See whether Jiwu can actually keep himself alive. There's the flash. He's going to have to flash out. There's the ulti as well. As Andil once again, the oh. target, the Empress Divide is just too good. And the Bloodthirst are not enough to keep him up. And Kwandong Freaks, I think this should at least be a Baron. They might even be able to grab the ace with a kill on Akomi here, and there it is. So well played. A beautiful shuffle from Bulldog. Two of your global tools. And the enemy team has Baron. Yeah, 100% in a turret should be going down here as now. Uh, who was ganking who? Uh, Dudu's going to flash his way out. So I think recognizing that he was the one being ganked. But still, his base, like the base is just going down here. Sylvie for Nexus trade? Yeah, I think maybe Dudu's realizing that perhaps he shouldn't actually be scared of the, uh, the Nocturne with a lot of magic resist, as now Nexus turrets are being shot at. Jiwoo does make his way back, but Nexus turret number one is down. And they didn't even get the Ajax. Yeah, I would say that this has not been a great trade thus far. Hmm. Okay, uh, Peter is going to be hit by a cat. And now he might be in trouble. Bull uh -oh. chasing him down. There's the paranoia. Bull may have overstepped, though, as ulti comes in from Jiwoo. Now just throwing this electricity into Dudu. Okay, Peter trying to cause an issue here as Nongshim. So far, they've done the most damage, but they haven't actually found too much more. That's a great ulti on to call me, but no follow-up there for Kuz. A significant amount of time, if not indefinitely. And that's why Nongshim really have to be cautious about potential Baron being started. Oh, yep, the engage on to Dundun, but he's just not that tanky. Okay, Paranoia does come on down here. On to Bull, they go. Peter actually finds the knock-up. Dundon has already fallen down, but Jiwoo has been singled out. Skates over the wall. Empress Divide used this time on to call me. And cut apart is the Zeri. Sylvie and Peter wondering where the rest of their team went. I think they're going to go back to their fountain and watch their Nexus explode. But the rest of your team are dead. And now it's a Nocturne Rakan to try and save the game. And I don't think odds are in their favor. I don't think it's looking all that good here as Peter finds one of the knockups on to Andil, his favorite target in these fights. And finally, Bulldog just decides that he's going to send the Sand Soldiers after them. One Nexus turret was in their way this entire time. 7,000 gold, the advantage. And Kwanong Freaks, they will find a victory in game one of the series. The amount of t the tankiness numbers, I want to see the tankiness numbers. I want to see damage like mitigated, like, you know, yeah, yeah, how yeah. much damage you would have took if you win the tankiest piece. I, I want the, the bar for like damage cared about, and Cuz <laughs> would be negative a million. None. Maokai in the jungle. I actually am a bit surprised. I would have liked to have seen um, the Maokai support and then even a Nocturne again if they wanted to. Um, but it doesn't really go along with a uh, Hui composition quite as well. So yeah, I, I, I kind of respect this also. And we've got to keep our eyes on Bull, how he's going to use this killer instinct. Let's jump into the rift with Saturday Showdown Game 2. Uh, wait, are we counting cutdowns? It's going to be Wolf. It's going to be uh, the, the spell we're getting the Sejuani. Yeah, Chronicle actually confirmed that the Zeri last game did have cutdown. Uh huh. You know, especially with the combo being down, it could have really actually been bad for Quantum Freak. So, I mean, it goes fine. Oh, this might not. Oh dear, there's the hook. Does manage to get the snare as well. Twisted advance from Sylvie. That's a lot of value with the Bramble Smash because he's going to make his way in. They're just going to turn on him. Bull now trying to rain the Akathian down and this pincer movement, it works out in the end. Another dredge line coming down though and Jiwoo will oh. secure that kill. Is it another one? It's Andil taking the oh, no! going for the triple and we are certifying it. Sejuani, yeah. love that. Okay, Empress Divide going to deliver away two sets Sejuani but he's going to flash, so he will live still. Um, yeah, and now, oh right. no, because. Yeah, okay, there's a hook. It's on to, Peter is a god today, as Bulldog's gonna have to get out of there. He's still burning down the dragon, also angry. And Nongshim think that they may have found the three. Void Seeker, not actually gonna find anything there. I do um, feel like, what if there were items that gave you more stats if they were lore relevant? As Way is dead. Uh, the Ignite, the value, and Fiesta is going to go down. I think he was dead anyway, but he was still lit on fire, and that was Cuz that did that. That's the value, you know, and now has his flashback. Wow. Peter and Fiesta just trying to keep them at bay. Andil taking a bit of damage. There's the Nature's Grass. Glacial Prison does come down. Obviously, it's an Ocean Soul, but let's not focus on that as Andil taking a fair bit of damage, but not that much, because, of course, the Unbreakable Will was there. 
Peter needs to try and find a way over this wall as Jiwoo is ulted. Andil gets a nice pulverize onto Fiesta, but now he's running away and he's just dead. And now it's Zeri time. The man advantage is going to be there. He's not hit by the Empress Divide this time. And it's a double. He's 5-0. and oh, oh. my lord. Oh, this is a close... Oh, Dudu's got Mega. Okay, Ulti gonna go wide there from Kuz as Dudu looking for that flank angle. He does have Mega, but he can't really find his way into the fight. His Nature's Grasp gonna be fantastic disengage. They pick their target. May not be the right, right one there for Peter, as Kuz is extraordinarily tanky. Peter off to the side, Sancho just coming in, and now Andil has found him. There's the flash out, the fear is fantastic, and the Gnar is just going to explode. It's a sixth for Jiwoo. Andil is also so incredibly low. Oh, almost just dies to the Comet, but he will survive. That is going to be Soul Point locked down for Nongshim. Not the worst. The goal difference. But, yeah. By the way, Jiwoo finishes Infinity Edge before item number two came in. As Sylvie is taking a bit of damage here, Rooker and Shield is now dealt with. Well, not, oh, now it's gone. Now it's yeah. gone. Um, Fiesta moving on over. There's the Glacial Prison. Nice. Knockups are going to come down as Fiesta finds the ultimate. A lot of AoE. And Jiwoo, he's at full health. Look at these health bars. They are just being eradicated. Bulldog finds absolutely no one. And Andil, he gets some CC. But if there's CC and there's no one there to see it, does it really happen? And the answer is kind of no. It's a double for Sylvie. And it was almost 100% kills. For Jiwoo, at least now he has 100% kill contribution. No, I didn't, you know, but I did now. Yeah, so I have now thought about the teleport. Look, Nongshin might have a 7 and 0 Zeri. Andil is gonna have to ult. Does manage to get a headbutt onto Peter as he flashes away. Peter is going to be just fine. There's a the teleport! His grass comes in. Yeah, there's the teleport. He even finds the Zeri with the Glacial Prison. And Jiwoo just walks it off. Now, Dudu, can he find it? Then Meganar does come through. As into the back line. They go the skate out, and he's just out of there. They do manage to get the kill onto Peter, though, as Jiwoo now finally finding his way over. These burst fires are just so dangerous, cuz, oh, they're just getting picked apart. And Bull trying to get some of these autos. These Sand Soldiers coming in as well. And over the wall goes Jiwoo and executes Bull. Nongshim, they deal with the rest of them as well because Fiesta's doing so much damage also. It's so close. Yeah, the flash just so good. And then but, Bull, but Bull also it's landed the Void Seeker in this yeah. moment onto Jiwoo. You know, if they win so far behind, they probably win that. Uh, um, what is... Dun, 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 That's dun, a dun, 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 dun. and Quantum Freaks are that fifth, so yeah. a little edge in a game where they have really not had any. And the Zeri, a little bit far away from this at the moment as well as Andil does it, they're get they're it. a good position. Now Jiwoo going to chase after them. It's going to be secured by Nongshim. Uh, Kuz is often very good at these, but not this time around. Is there's the flash in from Jiwoo? Andil trying to get into that back line. This time Bull's there for the follow-up, but he's going to be eradicated. The dragon gets angry. It's a double for this giga-fed Zeri. And this game, ladies and gentlemen, is not going to go on for very much longer. Nongshim will just push up with Exodia in hand. I thought they already had Exodia with a yeah. Zeri this fed. Um, but I guess they're going to need all of those buffs and stuff as well. And, you know, and that will just finish this one off. I think it was the right play, though, from Quantum Freaks to flip the Elder. But Dudu, the 1-1, one, one, uh, sorry, Dundun, the 1-1-1 one, 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 Cassante makes the right play. He drags Kuz away from the Elder, secures the buff, and then it's just game over from there. Nongshim answering back with a very convincing win. Losing momentum, they won that super long loss streak, and they lost what felt like a guaranteed playoff spot. So they obviously don't want that to happen again. And and you know what? Dun Dun, you could have just picked this Jackson 4. Yeah, I don't really see. And they could have kept the flex, actually. Yep. Um, because then they could have put it in the jungle if they wanted to. And then he could have picked something else. So, yeah, that was a, that was a whoopsie, I think. Um, but still, I don't know whether Nongshim would have played any other composition. He's going to be able to get around there and get stuff done in the early stages up against Kuz on his rel. Do or die here for both of these teams. We jump into game three in such a short period of time from being like, hey, these guys are actually really good. They're on the Western side. You know, they are, they were they were at points in like fourth place. And now it's like, can they beat Nongshim? Yeah. Will they make playoffs? I think after that Rakan pick that uh, as we can see here, I mean, it is, it's pretty devastating. Yep. This is why I don't think it makes sense to... Uh, Bull might need to be a little bit careful. It does have a very large minion wave. So Nongshim probably not going to threaten. And so the Drake 
is going to be taken down. Full information for Nongshim. Do know that this is happening. As uh, alright, Grand Entrance going to come through here for Peter. But they know that Kuz is well and truly in the vicinity. Yeah, I mean the timing's okay because it just cleared out the wave. So Peter should have his cooldowns back up by the time the next wave hits. But it looks like they're actually looking for the dive angle now. All summoners available, this could be tricky. Yeah, could be. Extendo Beam just to try and hit this wave as they look for Peter and they'll take him down. That is just so quick. As Jiwoo, now going to be the next one on the menu. Andil is going to tank up this turret to start this one off. There's the cleanse out as he looks for it. Andil just had enough health to be able to tank this one up. And they just kill both of them with zero response. Yeah. I don't know about this one, Sylvie. His focus on this top side is almost baffling. Tuz going to be able to take down at least two of them. And there is the third as well. So three apiece, both of these teams because you poked them out. And we're kind of seeing the dragon being taken once again without contest. They're going to poke Jiwu out under the tower here. And if he overstays, he could just go down. Well, he's going to ult to try and clear out the wave. And he's going to have to cleanse, but he does so very late. There's the battle dance to get Peter in there. That piercing arrow, man, that would have been a dead Jiwu. But uh, instead, he's going to be OK. Bulldog now making his way over, looking for Dundun. And a teleport is going to come on through. He flashes, but he's still going to get clipped by the Emperor's Divide. And now Fiesta, he wants Bulldog, gets the flash out. It's that Seismic Shove was in a good position. But still, the teleporting Talia doesn't really offer anything, and they just move on up, grab themselves a kill. They'll grab this turret on the bottom side as well, and this is disaster. Honestly, I'm not sure that Nongshim is going to fight this regardless, but as soon as he gets that, it becomes even harder to contest Vision. Just having the extra essential free sweeper and be able to kill wards quicker. They haven't a look to use a Herald in the mid uh, T1. It's just going to go down. Yeah, Arrow going to connect onto Sylvie. Chains of Corruption there as well. Magnet Storm, everything, wow. and he just blows up. That's going to be another charge as Cuz will just guide Shelly towards this turret. And one thing that is good is that Nongshim do have this pocket of vision control they have put together for themselves. Jiwoo now rotating over. Cuz on vision now as Peter does spot him out. And Fiesta puts up a wall. They look for Bull, who is now by himself. On the side, Seismic Shove gonna pull him back! And Bull's now just trying to get the damage down. The arrow from downtown is incredible! As the knockback, also pretty good. Fiesta trying to keep himself alive. And now Jiwoo may have found an angle. He flashes over, he gets one. But now Bull comes back into the fight. Sylvie, can you actually get him is the question. As Jiwoo over the wall is just so awkward. The placement is so weird. And now he's just going to get torn up. It was so close to being okay for Nongshim. And then it was a horrendous disaster. It's, uh, it's starting to become, like, the surmountability of this game for Nongshim is starting to go away from them. And this isn't helping as Magnus Storm going to be coming in as well. Wow. He gets his nature's grasp out as now Peter dives in. The bull is going to turn up and Battle Dance is going to, need, going to be needed to get him out of there. Jiwoo will turn up as well, though, as they look to split the fight with this Weaver's Wall. Jiwoo actually flanking right now on this Zeri. Can they actually make something happen? Because the Aatrox, he can't get in there. He doesn't have the teleport, but still, everybody on Quantum Freaks, it's still a 4v4, and they're way stronger. They're way bigger. It's so hard to approach. You know, the Maokai dead, who's basically your main frontline in the situation. Oh, that's a nice seismic shove. Is Andil very, very close to going down, but he'll survive. And more. Uh, they, they don't have soul yet. Okay, Andil, going to get caught out. Arrow is going to be the response. Still be pretty happy to tank it. Rookern is completed. Cuz looking for some of this honey fruit. Almost loses his Rookern. Disaster. As they do secure the Rift Scuttler. And so now, Dun Dun gets that wave pushed in. Knows where the Aatrox is. That is definitely good news. See a war being placed down. A good flank angle from the Aatrox would make all the difference, and they're looking for it. Yep. And here is the teleport in from Dun Dun. He's going to get there first. There's Andil. He gets over the wall. Dun Dun. Now just going to be biding his time. Peter and Dundun, can they actually get in there and make something happen? Because this poke is landing from Kwondong Freaks. And Dudu, he's found his way in as well. Andil is a tasty target. Might be an option here for Dundun if he can try and get in there. There's the seismic shove. Peter tries to get something done, but immediately blows up. Can they find the fight, though, is the question. Is Andil is probably going to go down as well. Sylvie, he oh, steals he the Drake. He's a hero. And Dundun and Jiwoo, they do manage to take down the support. Still, it's a three for two in favor of the Kwandong Freaks as Dundun wants to get himself out of here. Thought that maybe he could find a 1v1 against somebody. 
As Cuz will face check Sylvie. Peter and Dundun are off towards the side here. Hexgate's going to be taken. Sylvie's just really dead. But can they get on top of Bull? This is the flank angle that they're looking for. This seismic shove could be huge, but only lands onto one. And now Jiwoo, he's on top of Vandal. That's going to be the first kill for him as Peter is battle dancing his way out. Look at these health bars on Dundun and Fiesta. They are no longer oh no. in this fight. And look at how scary this doo-doo is. And not even able to skate his way out of it. Jiwoo is just cut down where he stands. And Kwanong Freaks, they'll transition into a Baron. Let's see whether it does land here. Seismic shove going to be avoided. Andil is still very squishy, but he could be a target that they might be able to look for. As uh, Bulldog clearing out some vision here as well. Arrow going to connect onto Fiesta, but they have found the Azir. Still, Empress Divide does come down. Nature's Grasp is decent, but he goes golden. That is massive! And cause, oh my gosh, him and Dudu just tear them up. Gee, well, I don't even know where he went, but he's really dead now. And Kwandong Freaks, I think they can just kind of look at Nongshim and they will just fall over. And that is precisely what they did. No Drake needed. They'll just look to break open the base. Yeah, they can do a lot of damage to the base if they want. They can go back, pick up the dragon after. But if they stop Dundun from re recalling, they might just be able to end. Yeah, they might just be able to finish this game. As he is going to try to teleport and he will be able to make it out. So let's see whether they can mount some sort of heroic defense. The tree is very much chopped down. And Peter and Dundun against the world. The grand entrance is not really that. Bull's got a cleanse. And Dundun does not have a health bar. Double kill for a 7 0 10 Azir. The Nexus will be taken down. And Kwandong Freaks, a return to form here in game number three. It was a tougher series than I think they would have liked. But a win's a win. It's on a Sylvie on the Maokai who definitely struggled. <laughs> All right, Bull, always a, uh, a hero for the camera. To defend the base, but yeah, I just think you can even look for the damage graphs. It didn't feel like Nongshim got an opportunity to play the game really after those early moments. No. Thank you very much, guys. This is Deer for the POG interview translation, joined by Cuz and Bull on the side of Kwangdong Freaks. Congratulations! Well, you guys defeated Nongshim and ended your three losing streak. How do you feel? Yeah, we were on our third losing streak and we were struggling a little bit, but we we're able to end that losing streak. I'm very happy about that and we'll make sure that we keep this up. And Bull. Yeah, we were on uh, our load with the losing streak, but I think we were doing our best and we put in a lot of effort into preparing for today's match. And cuz! So, I feel like you guys were trying to bring your spirit up with the losing streak. Um, how has everything been? I feel like we weren't able to pull off the right place that we were uh, preparing uh, based on the drafts that we did pick. So I think that's probably why I think our coaching staff just gave us a lot of feedback and I think we were able to sort of reflect on those. And so it's been a while since Kaz's Sejuani made an appearance and you've been banning or giving Sejuani away for a while, but you locked her in today instead. So walk us through the draft. While we were preparing for drafts, uh, in the past, we didn't really uh, evaluate Sejuani as a high priority pick, but I think we re-evaluated re that. And uh, given that we we're trying to prioritize Sejuani this time around, I think everything went a lot better than before. And so you went with unsealed spellbook Sejuani, which is the first time we saw uh, anything like that in the LCK. So with you being able to make some good use with the rune here and there, well, what's the value that you were looking for? I feel like Aftershock, Sejuani, when it comes to practicing here, I felt like there were a lot of downsides for that. And we tried to utilize Unsealed Spellbook, and it went really well as, uh, as compared to what we expected. And I think that's why we tried to utilize that today. And in game, uh, with, with you facing Zeri three times in a row, Bull, you, we were able to see that you guys put in a lot of effort into uh, 
the draft. So with the Ferris Ash, uh, what was your plan here in Game 3? I think Ferris Ash just looked really perfect in terms of the draft. I think we were just expecting the uh, Zeri to come out. I think we're just trying to do our best to deny her the best we can. And so, Bull, you haven't played Ferris before today and never played Zeri either, and it's a common pick lately. So how would you rate Ferris and Zeri in this meta? I think Zeri and Ferris... Uh, depending on the comp, there's a lot of things that they can accomplish. So I think depending on the team's color, I think that's what will determine uh, which team will end up with Ferris or Zeri. And Bull, as the master of victory ceremonies, your Ferris ceremony was quite impressive. So can you take this moment to reenact your ceremony? Yeah, sure. Oh, can you take my mic, please? One, two, three. <laughs> please, maybe applaud for him. Uh, I am so embarrassed, but it looks like you were embarrassed himself. And now, you will face T1 next. As strong of an opponent they are, what will your goals be? I believe T1 is a very formidable opponent. Uh, it's not that we're able to win. I, we're, we understand that we can't always win, so I will make sure that despite any loss that we face, we're able to make the most out of it and learn things from it. And both, I feel like we are able to grow and learn through our defeats, and I believe that we're able to improve from our losses, and we'll make sure that we're prepared for our next match. And this will be the end of the interview with Cuz and Bull of Kwangdong Freaks, and back to the space.